Elon Musk, that visionary extraordinaire, might have once assumed that his space odyssey venture held an unassailable claim to launching the premier private voyage to Mars. But oh, how the tides have shifted. If Musk ever clung to that notion, it's a notion he clings to no longer. Enter this week's cosmic crescendo as not one but two audacious space agencies unfurl their masterpiece before the universe, a plan to dispatch a lander and a rover to the dark side of the moon, the lunar south pole. The space race the world needs is finally starting. This video is the third part of our series. If you haven't checked out the first two parts, click on the links in the description down below. Here's how the competition in the new space race stacks up. United Launch Alliance A rocket alternative to SpaceX inches toward its first launch. Building a rocket is hard. Launching a new rocket for the first time is even harder. The Vulcan rocket is a new rocket developed by the United Launch Alliance, a company owned by Boeing and Lockheed Martin. The Vulcan was supposed to launch in May, but a tank that holds fuel cracked during testing in March. Hydrogen leaked from the tank and ignited, destroying the Vulcan's upper stage and damaging the test stand. Tori Bruno, the chief executive of the United Launch Alliance, said the problem was now well understood. A fix was in the works and the first Vulcan launch was expected to occur later this year. There's a big new rocket called the Vulcan Centaur that's taking the place of ULA's old rockets. These old rockets, the Atlas V and Delta IV, have been used for 20 years. The Vulcan Centaur is designed to carry a lot of stuff into space. It can lift 60,000 pounds to a lower part of space and 14,300 pounds to a higher part. In comparison, SpaceX's Falcon 9 can take 22,800 pounds to the lower part. ULA really wanted its first Vulcan launch to go well. If it did, they could plan more Vulcan launches this year, like the one for Sierra Space's Dream Chaser mission. ULA needs to do two successful Vulcan flights to be allowed to launch U.S. military and spy satellites for the Space Force. They have a deal to do 35 missions for the Space Force in the next five years. The Vulcan is also going to send up more satellites for Amazon's Kuiper satellite plan. India's Second Moonshot on July 14th, the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, launched the Chandrayaan-3 mission to the moon on board a launch vehicle, Mark III, from Sriharikota. Chandrayaan-3 is largely a replica of its predecessor, Chandrayaan-2, that was launched in July of 2019. While the orbiter entered into orbit around the moon, the surface mission failed in September when the lander crashed instead of executing a slow descent. ISRO later identified a problem in the guidance software and unexpected dispersion in the propulsion system during certain phases of the descent. In Chandrayaan-3, the rocket will first put the payload in an elliptical orbit around Earth. Then, a propulsion module will take over and guide the lander to a circular orbit around the moon. Finally, the lander will separate from the propulsion module and slowly land on the moon's surface on August 23rd to the 24th. To improve the chances of a successful landing, ISRO has strengthened the lander's legs, lowered its minimum thrust, increased its power supply, and upgraded the landing sequence. This will be India's second attempt to soft land a lander and a rover on the lunar surface. If successful, India will be the fourth country after the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China to have successfully soft landed on the moon. The importance of this feat cannot be overstated. Soft landings can be particularly tricky, as shown by a recent mission from a Japanese private company, Ispace, which crashed on the surface of the moon in April of this year. The success of Chandrayaan-3 will also make it the surface mission closest to the lunar south pole to date, a region of the moon that has been found to be geologically unique and host to spots in permanent shadow. To study these and other features, the mission has six scientific payloads. A seventh instrument, on the propulsion module, will profile the signs of life on Earth to help scientists look for similar signs on planets beyond the solar system. Taken together, Chandrayaan-3 offers opportunities for India to lead the world's response to the Moon's growing importance in the scientific and the political realm. Russia Meet Chandrayaan-3's Russian competitor, Luna 25. Russia is getting ready to go back to the Moon, and it's been about 50 years since they last went. They have a mission called Luna 25. Their Luna 25 lander might actually reach the moon's south pole before India's Chandrayaan-3 does. Russia's engagement with lunar exploration has been dormant since Luna 24's return to Earth with lunar regolith samples in August 1976. The emergence of Luna 25 marks a notable shift in Russia's lunar aspirations. As the country seeks to collaborate with China in the intensified global competition to conquer the moon's terrain. 
Russia's mission within its renewed lunar initiative encountered significant delays, spanning nearly two years. Roscosmos has outlined an ambitious and aggressive schedule for its Luna 25 spacecraft. The spacecraft is set to embark on a five-day voyage to the moon, followed by a five- to seven-day period in lunar orbit, which will then culminate in a descent to one of three potential landing sites situated near the moon's southern pole. This intricately planned timeline indicates that Russia might be on track to either match or narrowly surpass Chandrayaan-3's anticipated lunar landing. Russia's biggest competition today is India, whose Chandrayaan-3 mission has been orbiting the moon since August 6th. Both India and Russia are in a race against time to be the first to soft land on the coveted south pole of the moon, beating the US, China, and others to the punch to land on the south pole of the moon, a territory that has been practically unexplored till now. Blue Origin Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin seems to be taking a page from the Book of Wisdom that says the second mouse gets the cheese. While Elon Musk's SpaceX has been zooming ahead, Blue Origin is embracing a steadier stride as it gets ready for the first flight of its New Glenn rocket. They're gearing up for the grand debut of the New Glenn, a heavyweight rocket built to carry humans and payloads to the stars and beyond. Their plan is to fire it up next year, but they're not racing to catch up to Musk's speedster just yet. While SpaceX often gets the spotlight for its rapid pace, Blue Origin is approaching things like a wise tortoise, making sure they cross the finish line with as few hiccups as possible. China China's private aerospace industry takes off. Landspace technology made history on July 12th when it launched the Zoop-2 ZQ-2 rocket, becoming the world's first private company to launch a methane liquid oxygen carrier rocket. This is a major breakthrough for China's new low-cost liquid propellant rockets, and it is a sign of the growing strength of the country's private aerospace industry. The ZQ-2 launch is a crucial moment for Landspace, an eight-year-old startup. The success of the ZQ-2 launch is a major milestone for China's private aerospace industry. China is also getting ready to challenge SpaceX's Starlink this year. China is preparing to launch nearly 13,000 satellites into low Earth orbit as part of its effort to challenge and observe SpaceX's Starlink constellations. The initiative, named GW, is being managed by a newly formed entity called China Satellite Network Group Co. Their aim is to rapidly deploy a grand total of 12,992 small satellites into orbit. This would significantly outnumber Starlink's current fleet of approximately 3,500 satellites. Although SpaceX envisions having 12,000 satellites in orbit by 2027 and eventually reaching a total count of 40,000 orbiting devices, China's proposed satellite deployment would still outshine these figures. This comes at a time of strained relations with the United States and export restrictions that have limited Chinese companies' access to certain advanced computer chips. President Xi Jinping has emphasized the need for China to develop its own technology capabilities across various sectors in order to achieve self-reliance. In the years to come, we can expect to see even more impressive achievements from China's private aerospace companies. NASA NASA's SLS, Space Launch System, stands as an ultra-heavy rocket, forming the bedrock for human expeditions beyond Earth's orbit. Boasting unmatched capabilities, SLS holds the distinction of being the solitary rocket capable of sending the Orion spacecraft, along with a crew of four astronauts and sizable cargo, directly to the moon within a single mission. Outclassing all others in terms of payload mass, volume, and launch energy, SLS brings versatility to the table while streamlining mission intricacies. This rocket is built with adaptability in mind, allowing for enhancements to accommodate a variety of missions, spanning from human lunar and Martian ventures to robot-led scientific escapades exploring deep space realms like the Moon, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. Thorough analysis of post-flight data confirmed that SLS not only met but exceeded performance expectations, paving the way for its role in Artemis II and subsequent crewed missions. NASA will soon launch the first human mission to the lunar south pole. After two Artemis test missions, the upcoming Artemis III mission, scheduled for 2025, will signal humanity's long-awaited return to the lunar terrain after over five decades. NASA is poised to create history by dispatching the inaugural human explorers to venture into the area close to the lunar south pole. NASA chose SpaceX to provide the human landing system for Artemis III. This system will transport astronauts from the lunar orbit of Orion to the moon's surface and back. But what's causing all these big countries to suddenly care so much about exploring the moon? Many countries are working on missions to establish permanent bases on the moon. This is a major geopolitical goal, as it would give countries a strategic advantage in space. The moon might also have something really valuable. One of the things countries are really interested in is helium-3. This special type of helium is quite rare on Earth. There might be around a million tons of helium-3 on the moon. This stuff is really exciting because it could be used as fuel for a special kind of nuclear power called fusion. 
The cool thing about using helium-3 for fusion is that it would make very little harmful waste, which is good for the environment. Scientists and space organizations are looking into the idea of getting helium-3 from the moon's surface and using it to make clean and powerful energy back on Earth. The thought of using helium-3 for energy has sparked dreams of a whole new way of making power. It's like the moon could become a big storehouse of something really precious that might change the way we get energy. So, what's next for SpaceX? In a way, SpaceX is currently competing with itself by advancing the Starship. But if the company can really create a fully reusable launcher that's the largest and most powerful in the world, it could change the course of human history and push it toward the stars. So we will leave it right here. If you did like the video, please do give us a like. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already.